Today I'll be sharing the story of the Pincushion Cross, which is a cross my friends and I built and put up on one of the tallest mountains near our city. I'm gonna kind of go through the whole story. It's been about eight months since we, we put it up. There's been a lot that's happened with the cross. It's been broken, it's been torn down, it's been put back up, all these different things. So I just thought I'd make a video sharing the story of it and yeah. Also the time right now is 6.50, which means I should be at work because I was scheduled to work five to 10 today. I work at, I work at Chick-fil-A, I serve the Lord's Chicken. You already know, but I was supposed to be working. So I, I pulled up to work at five o'clock. I called out sick a few days ago and apparently you're supposed to wait two weeks to come back after you called out sick. So I, I didn't know that. So I just pulled up ready to work and they're like, you can't work. You gotta wait two weeks because all this coronavirus stuff, it's all good. I'm making this video. It's, it's lit. God's got a plan. All right, I'm gonna stop wasting time. We're gonna hop right into the story. So it all started back in September of 2019 before school started. We wanted to do something cool before we all had to go back to school even though I'm homeschooled, so it didn't really matter for me. But my friends weren't homeschooled, so they, they had to go back to school. I mean, we just wanted to do something cool before they didn't have as much free time. And so we all kind of started thinking of ideas of what to do. We were thinking maybe to go on a trip or something. But my buddy George actually had the idea to build a cross and take it on top of one of the tallest hikes near our city. We all thought it was a super cool idea. And basically the reason behind doing it is after you go on this long hike, you get to the top and you just see the cross as a reminder of what Jesus has done for our sins. Um, so we were all down with the idea. My buddy Caleb actually started building the cross and he had it done in like a few days. So we took it up that weekend. We actually strapped it on top of George's car and we drove all the way up to the lake area where the hike is. And we started the hike. We had all these little shovels and stuff. So we all carried the stuff up there. Then we started getting to work at the very top and just making like a little hole to stick the cross in. And as we're, as we're doing that, a park ranger came up and he's like, hey, you guys, you guys can't do that. Like, if you put it there, I'll have to take it down. We were all pretty upset because we thought it was an amazing idea. And when he told us we couldn't do that, we we're like, oh, that sucks. So we ended up putting it off to the side uh, out of view up there um, because we didn't want to take it back down. The cross was too heavy. So we put it off to the side and we kind of we kind of forgot about it for for like a few weeks. We're like, oh, maybe one day we'll, we'll put it back up. And then about two or three weeks later, I get a call from George and he said that he was up at the hike and the cross was actually put up. So that meant some random person found the cross and then stuck it up. And then after that, we started seeing all these social media posts about the cross. I'll, I'll put a few on the screen right now. When we saw the different posts, we were like, okay, people like this idea. People think it's really cool. So we should like try and always keep the cross up. A few months after that, I went up to the cross and then I saw the cross wasn't there. And someone had actually picked it up and thrown it way off the mountain. And I think I have a picture of it. It was like in the bushes. I went down and brought it back up and stuck it back where it was. And then another few months after that, the cross was thrown down again. So there's all these different people that wanted the cross there. And then there's some people that got mad for some reason and then they would throw it. So yeah, it was pretty crazy. These people would legit just throw the cross off the side of the mountain and the cross would almost break like every time. But it was cool to see all these different people start putting the cross back up again. Like all these all these random people, we have no idea who they are. Um, they, they thought the cross belonged there. So they would go down to where it was thrown and they'd pick it up and put it back. And actually like a few months ago, the cross was thrown down and broken so bad it was like split into different pieces. And someone, uh, I just went up to the hike today and someone like tied the cross together. And now there's a little flute on the cross that people like blow when they're up there. It's been pretty crazy to see because it all started with an idea and then that idea came to life. It's been about a month since anybody's thrown it down. So that means the people that were throwing it down kind of got the message that that cross is staying there. So yeah, I just thought it was an interesting story that I'd share. It's definitely one I think is worth sharing. Also, I just want to say if you have any ideas that honor God, God will honor the idea. This cross is a perfect reminder of that. So yeah, that was the story of the pincushion cross. If you're ever in Clovis or Fresno and you want to visit the, the cross, all you got to do is type in pincushion trail. You go to that trail and you take it all the way to the top and that cross will be chilling there. And like I said earlier, there's this little flute on it that like people blow, I guess, but you probably shouldn't blow it right now because coronavirus is happening and you don't want to get coronavirus. And we've been talking, we're probably going to make another cross that's even bigger somewhere else. Stay tuned. Also, this is the podcast studio. The podcast is happening soon. As you can, I, I have a mic. This is the table. There's going to be one, two, three people. And then if we have a guest, there'll be four people. Anyways, that is the story. Thank you for like, watching. Is it difficult? No, it's a breeze. It's a breeze, but I told you it's a breeze. Yo, it's a breeze, but I told you it's